RGB can be a beast, but we're gonna try and make it a lot simpler for you if this is the first time doing a build with RGB right now on Robitech. RGB, it's probably one of the most important, if not the single most important thing that you can add to any system. We all know that RGB boosts performance of PCs by like what, Josiah, like? A million. Wow, that's, you heard it here for, folks. You heard it here first, folks, right? In fact, we're gonna show you a graph right now that Josiah made that shows a PC without RGB and then a PC with RGB. One million percent better increase. But let's just be, let's just be super transparent here. Anytime that you add RGB to a system, it automatically makes it way more complicated of a build. So what I put together today for this very special talking head episode is just some simple tips and tricks that you can use as a beginner's guide for RGB as you're planning your build. So that way when you get to the point of actually building it, your experience will be far less frustrating. Now, this is a guide and it is a talking head guide. In fact, down below in the description is a link to all of these table contents areas where you can look at specific RGB software that we're gonna, we may have tips and, tips and tricks about, um, specific nuances. So feel free to jump back and forth. Here are the top six things that you should know when doing an RGB build. Number one, first and foremost, be careful mixing up too many RGB environments. The more RGB that you install, the less compatible things become. In fact, they stomp over each other. Let's just be super clear for the most part, RGB software can be essentially the bane of existence when it comes to PC customization in 2021. Let's, it's just, it's a mess. And the thing is, is that some companies, and there are companies that are better than others, but some companies are trying to improve that process by making things more compatible. What we need is a one size fits all or one system that controls them all, like the one ring, but we don't have anything like that. So first and foremost, the first rule that you need to know is ideally stick to one, maybe two tops when you're choosing your build. The second one, be aware of how many RGB headers and USB headers that you have on a motherboard. Many motherboards, and I'll show you, you'll see some pictures here that Josiah is popping up, will only have like one or two of these addressable RGB headers and one or two of these USB headers that we're showing you right here. And these things are super critical because they're gonna show you uh, sorry, they're going to be responsible for controlling the RGB that you have in your PC. RGB headers, specifically the five volt, three pin addressable, are the ones that allow you to change all your colors and all of the RGB and certain things plug into that. And then if you use USB, that's gonna be the stuff that like things like Corsair and Lee and Lee use because they'll have hubs, etc., that will do the things for controlling your RGB there. You may need things like uh, an RGB splitter, like a cable, like what we're showing here. Or you may need an NZXT USB hub because you need more internal USB connections than you actually have. So again, I know sounds complicated. It kind of, it relatively is. And the thing is, it's just stuff that you need to prepare for as you're delving into the world of RGB. Third, you need to look at how your RGB connects to each other. In certain cases, like for instance in Corsair, Corsair stuff uses proprietary connections to connect all of its stuff to, for instance, its RGB lightning pub hubs. Things like Cooler Master actually uses like standard RGB connections, like what you'd find on a motherboard to do its connections. While in other cases like Lee and Lee also uses like an RGB hub. So again, you need to investigate the connections. And the other thing too, is if you're gonna use like Lee and Lee streamer cables, which are the, the beautiful RGB PCI connections, and then you're gonna use Corsair fans. All of these have different connections. And the other thing too, is you wanna make sure that A, there's a way to connect them all into the limited number of slots you have. And then the other thing too, is that if it's possible to daisy chain them. <laughs> this is a kind of a critical one, but number four, don't plug a five volt addressable RGB. Looks like this, it's a little three pin. Don't plug a five volt addressable RGB into a 12 volt non-addressable. That will literally fry it, okay? Um, and if you can find some sort of magic way to try and plug a 12 volt into a five volt, that will also not work. So here's the deal. Don't try and plug things into where they don't fit. If it looks like it doesn't work, don't do it because you could actually end up destroying the components. I know this goes without saying, but once you add RGB, you add more cables, which means you need to be a re really aware of how much cable management room you have in your case when you are building your build. The more RGB you have, the more room you're going to need for cable management. Believe it or not, if you watch some of my videos, and we'll show you one right here of a Lee and Lee 0 one dynamic, I'm putting in Lee and Lee streamers and nine sets of fans and 
you know, additional RGB components. I'm barely fitting all of that stuff in the back of an 011 Dynamic XL. So just be aware, you might have cases that are very shallow in the back and you're trying to jam as much pretty bling bling in there and you're not gonna have any room. So with RGB comes more cable management. So even though you, I talk about having cable management room, you also need to understand and be aware that you're gonna have more connections and more points of fail, which means you probably need to be on top of how you're gonna do your cable management. The last and probably the, like the weird number six one, but <clears throat> if RGB terminates to an RGB header like this, then it's going to be controlled by the motherboard software. If RGB terminates to USB, so it connects into like a hub that then connects into USB on the motherboard, then it's gonna be controlled via software. Those are, at a high level, the top six kind of like tips going into building a PC and using RGB. But now let's talk a little bit and go into um, each of the individual software pieces and talk to you a little bit about compatibility and give you kind of a heads up if you're planning on using some of these uh, moving forward. Now we're gonna go in alphabetical order because it's just a little bit easier versus like trying to choose pros versus con, but I'll give you like a thumbs up, thumbs down in terms of if it's an environment that we recommend here on Robitech. So let's start with ASRock and that's specifically Polychrome. Um, Polychrome, first and foremost, if I was gonna go, it, it's kind of a mess software. Um, there's a ton of different versions and only versions that are compatible with the motherboard work. You will find certain things that are what's called PolySync that works with Polychrome, but if you do have PolySync and you do not have a Polychrome capable motherboard, so for instance, you're taking like an ASRock, sorry, an ASRock 6800 XT that has PolySync and you plug it into an Asus ROG motherboard, guess what, that doesn't work. PolySync only works with Polychrome and Polychrome is only available on ASRock motherboards. Let's talk about Asus Armory Crate. And that gets kind of a thumbs up. And the main reason being is that Asus and Corsair play very nice with each other, which is rare in uh, the world uh, that we live in. So um, you can just download it right from, uh, if you have an internet connection, it basically will launch. If we install Windows 10, it'll automatically install. It will also include the LAN driver for the motherboard as well. It also is probably in terms of compatibility, the one that we'll see the most in terms of other devices like RAM or et cetera that plugs into it. So G-Skill RAM will read within uh, Asus Armory Crate. Uh, same thing with Corsair, et cetera. Um, so it has the best in terms of overall global compatibility for a motherboard RGB controller. Let's talk about Corsair IQ. I'll just be super clear. IQ is probably one of the best in terms of its overall RGB software. That's not to say it's perfect, it's very bloatware, but in terms of the amount of control that you have over the device is very, very good. And the other thing too is everything that is ASUS and works in Armory Crate does also work and show up within IQ. If you stay within the Corsair environment, you can pretty much get RAM, AIO, you know, uh, graphics cards, all those things will all work within it. And it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of the kind of bling and um, you know overall effects that you can do within the RGB software. The other thing too is that their fans and stuff also work very well. The one thing I will let you guys know about Corsair, just a little advanced technique for you. Um, their stuff all supports in numbers of six. So for instance, if you're doing a Lee and Lee 011 dynamic build and you're putting in nine fans, you're gonna have to use twice as many hubs. And then if you have twice as many hubs, that means you have to worry about plugging in twice as many USB devices. And this is where you can go into one of those top tips that I gave you before, where you might run out of headers on your motherboard um, to be able to connect things up. Corsair, for the most part, thumb up. Really, really enjoy using it. Let's talk about EVGA, um, their EVGA. EVGA does have it. It's pretty simple interface. Uh, it's called EVGA X1. Um, uh, it's pretty much, you're gonna use it specifically, and I'm only talking about the stuff that is for PC hardware. This is for their RGB lighting, et cetera. It's called X1. It also has things like it allow you to overclock and things like that, but very, very simple in terms of controlling the colors and all that sort of stuff. It's, it works great, very easy to use. Um, the only thing is, is that the more you stack onto it, there could potentially end up being issues. Okay, for G-Skill RGB lighting control, um, G-Skill, I give a meh. And the main reason being is, is that um, G-Skill, for all the stuff that you can do in G-Skill, it's the one kind of graphic, it's, sorry, it's the one kind of RGB software that has the most issues in terms of uh, conflicting with motherboard stuff. So if you're gonna use your motherboard like Asus or um, uh, basically your Gigabyte or whatever it was, then the G-Skill stuff has a tendency to stop working because the motherboard stuff will overwrite it. The one thing that's unfortunate about that is that the G-Skill RGB software ends up having a much higher 
amount of flexibility that you can do to the G skill, like for instance, their um, RAM, and you can control like what the individual LEDs look like. But the problem is, is that none of that works because then, you know, Aura Sync completely writes over it, etc. So it's gonna get a kind of a meh for us, or close to a thumbs down. Next one is Gigabyte RGB Fusion. This is for your Aura stuff um, and everything else. For the most part, this is, this is pretty close to a thumbs down. The problem is, is that uh, Fusion, and we're, we're testing this right now, but Fusion is one of those things that it just either works or it doesn't work, it crashes all the time. Uh, for the most part, like Aura's has a tendency to have some really spectacular stuff, like on all their 3070s and 3080s, they actually have like uh, screens, etc. But getting that stuff to work within their RGB software is very problematic. Some people have had um, some people have had better luck than I've had. Um, the one thing I will say is that it always works better when you do a clean installation. So at the beginning, you'll probably end up having better luck. Let's talk about Lee and Lee. The one thing I will say is, unlike all of the other RGB software, um, it has no RGB or hex control for color. It's basically you just got to kind of guess. Um, for the most part, it's pretty simplistic in terms of what you can do within the Lee and Lee stuff, but it works very, very well. If you have to use it in conjunction with other RGB software like your motherboard, etc., the RGB stuff that's built into the motherboard just has a tendency to not work as well as what they have within the Lee and Lee software. So if you're gonna choose Lee and Lee, um, the one thing I will say is that um, it's better to just do it with its proprietary stuff versus trying to do it via the motherboard or additional RGB control software. I would say Lee and Lee is a, a thumbs up because what you can do and the controls that they give you are very good and it does work for the most part. Next one is MSI Creator Center or MSI Dragon Center and what's called Mystic Light. What was a thumbs down has actually gone up to more towards a thumbs up. It's been one of those things that they've actually really been improving on. Um, the one thing I will say is Mystic Light is kind of still of a thumbs down for me because the control you do have in there is pretty good um, when it does work. But the problem is, is that it doesn't always work. So I think it will get better over time, but right now we have to give it like M ready. Uh, NZXT, <clears throat> this is specifically cam. When you talk about devices, like for instance, the Z series AIOs, or even the RGB control on their X series, um, their software works very well. Uh, doing things like putting things like putting um, uh, animated GIFs or animations onto their devices is very easy and intuitive with their software. For the most part, it does it just does a really great job. So we give a solid thumbs up to Cam, even though it's got bloatware, etc. You know, still for the most part, it's probably still one of the better ones right there with Corsair IQ. The last one I'm going to cover is um, Razer, um, and this is Chroma. Chroma works really well for accessories. But their hardware stuff specifically, I know they've got new cases and things like that, and the compatibility, it seems to have gotten worse as they have focused more on accessories and less on PC hardware. I do know that they've got new cases, like their new Tomahawk cases and stuff like that that has Chroma support. I know ASRock just released a Chroma only version of like their B550 and X570 uh, motherboard. But for the most part, like what Chroma can do is like, all it does is with me with using Razer Chroma is it just makes me wish I was using Corsair IQ. Razer's got a lot of money built into it with like Synapse and everything like that, but given how bloated it becomes, like it forgets what it has to do, writing to individual parts of the motherboard ends up becoming really hard and it's just problematic overall. So we're gonna give Razer, again, it's, it's a mad towards a thumbs down um, because I just know that they could do better and they've done better in other parts, but for the most part, just given how much it updates, it just feels like that could be a whole lot more solid and it just has a tendency not to. That's our guide. That gave you, I ran you through all of kind of the top manufacturers, gave you like put you through um, pretty much everything that there was in terms of like trying to give you an overview. So I'd love to know if there was more that we could have added to this. Again, the whole point of this is to help you plan a RGB build and be more successful versus like, hey, you get to the end, you're like, oh my gosh, I wish I would have known this before. So I'm trying to give you RGB gotchas before you uh, finish your build. Love to know down in the comments below what other things we could add to like a guide like this or what additional guides for RGB that we can add so we can do more videos on this series here in the future. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button with that like button and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we go live right here on Robitech. And also, we have a live show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday starting at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time where we do giveaways, we hang out, we play games, and we do PC builds every single week. Anyway, guys, this has been absolutely awesome. If you want to know more from Robitech, follow us on all the socials. Outside of that, we will see you on the next video.